Tui. Marvelous news. This marks your 13th Halloween. The completion of your training. Which means... What do you mean you're only a year old? No, it's your 13th Halloween. It's the completion of your training. Which means you get to wear the hat. What, what do you... Welcome to Teacup for One. Put on our bikinis and go swimming in it. My name is Matt and I have two degrees. Halloween Town. Am I right? You know it. You love it. As a kid, it's one of the most magical Halloween movies out there. And as an adult, you kind of realize it really isn't that great of a movie, which in some ways makes it an even better movie. Halloween Town has this unique, fun, low budget charm. And over the past 20 some odd years, it has grown quite the cult following. And why not? This movie is so much fun to watch. And a big part of that, for me at least, is that the actors are all so committed to everything they're doing. Like, right down to the smaller cameo roles, like the cat aerobics instructor, the uh, hairdressing werewolf, the broom salesman. And then, of course, we have our main characters, led by Academy Award-nominated actor Debbie Reynolds as Grandma Aggie, delivering such beautifully well-crafted lines as, let's all put on our bikinis and go swimming in it. Or, go! It's just an evil smell that freezes us! Seriously though, let's just talk about Debbie Reynolds for a second. Like, is it just me, or is she the biggest name to ever do a Disney Channel original movie? And of course, we're not counting the people whose careers were launched by the Disney Channel, because of course we have the likes of Zac Efron and Zendaya, etc, etc. But, when Debbie Reynolds did Halloween Town, she was already Hollywood royalty. So what was she doing, doing a decom? Let's do a quick recap. Aside from Halloween Town, Obviously, Debbie Reynolds is probably best known for Singing in the Rain, which she starred in when she was just 18. And from that point on, the rest of her life and career were quite the roller coaster. She starred in countless films. Aside from Singing in the Rain, her most significant film role was probably Molly Brown in The Unsinkable Molly Brown, which is a movie musical uh, based on the Broadway musical, which in turn is based on the life and times of philanthropist and epic historical figure Molly Brown. You might know her best as the character portrayed by Kathy Bates in James Cameron's Titanic. Now, Debbie Reynolds was nominated for an Oscar for her performance as Molly Brown, but unfortunately lost it to Julie Andrews as Mary Poppins. She was reportedly devastated by the loss, but Molly Brown still stayed one of the most personal roles to Debbie Reynolds in her entire life because she started to see herself as being unsinkable, just like Molly Brown. Uh, I just Debbie Reynolds explains it better. Let me read you a quote. In life, I'm like Molly Brown. I've had tough times along the way and gone through experiences that many women have gone through, but I ain't down yet. Oh, I hate that word down, but I love the word up, because up means hope, and that's just what I got hope. It's true. Like I said, her life was quite... The roller coaster. She was married three times, probably most famously to Eddie Fisher. They had two kids, Todd Fisher and Princess Leia, and then the marriage ended because Eddie Fisher had an affair with Elizabeth Taylor. I actually saw Carrie Fisher's one woman show, Wishful Drinking, and she described it best by saying that her parents' relationship was like when Brad Pitt divorced Jennifer Aniston to be with Angelina Jolie. Unfortunately, her next two marriages weren't great either. The divorce from the second one put her in debt for nearly three million dollars, and she ended up having to go on tour in the 1970s to help pay it off. And then her third husband was a real estate developer who ended up cheating on her and taking most of her money. And to top all of that off, when she was going through the third divorce, she had to declare personal bankruptcy. When she was married to her real estate husband, the two of them bought a hotel and casino just off the Las Vegas Strip. She renamed it the Debbie Reynolds Hollywood Hotel and used a portion of it as a museum dedicated to showing off her collection of Hollywood memorabilia. Now this is something very important to know, understand, and love about Debbie Reynolds. She had an extensive collection of costumes, 
props, relics, and just memorabilia from famous classic Hollywood films. And one of her huge goals in life was finding a museum and a permanent home for all of these items because she was so passionate about preservation. Her collection included things like Marilyn Monroe's dress from The Seven Year Itch, Charlton Heston's tunic from Ben-Hur, Audrey Hepburn's dress from My Fair Lady, the Maltese Falcon, Elizabeth Taylor's headdress in Cleopatra, and the ruby slippers. Like I said, she had a lifelong dream of finding a permanent home for this collection in the way of a museum, and she wasn't able to find any support to help her do it. And then the one time she came close to doing it herself through the uh, Debbie Reynolds Hollywood Hotel, she hit a huge roadblock because the people who were operating the casino within the hotel decided that it wasn't profitable and they pulled out. And without a casino, she was just left with an unprofitable Las Vegas hotel. And that's when she had to file for bankruptcy and start selling off parts of her really beautiful collection. And now there's nothing to confirm this, but the timeline does line up. She filed for bankruptcy in 1997 and Halloween Town was released in 1998. Just as she ended up having to go on tour in the 1970s to help cover the cost of her second divorce, I feel like it's very likely that at least part of the reason, if not most of the reason, that she took Halloween Town was to help secure some financial stability after her divorce and bankruptcy in the late 90s. Again, none of this is confirmed. It's just me looking at timelines of events and then putting two and two together. Regardless, Towards the end of the 90s, when Halloween Town was being made, Debbie Reynolds was going through a very rough time in her life, emotionally, financially, everything. And I think the most beautiful thing about her being in this movie is reading anyone's experiences who worked with her. Seriously, just go back and read any interview with any of her co-stars from Halloween Town, like especially Kimberly J. Brown. When Debbie Reynolds passed away, she wrote this beautiful tribute and said, she went out of her way to help others shine as brightly as they could. She tried to move huge ladders on set just to help the crew and looked out for every actor, no matter their role. Now, stories like this about a huge star from like the golden age of Hollywood being so grounded and so humble would be amazing under any circumstances. But just the fact that she was able to bring that level of optimism and positivity to set when she was going through so much in her personal life. Again, not to mention that this was a small made for TV movie and she was a huge Hollywood star says so much about her professionalism and her commitment, but also just about what kind of an incredible magical person she was in real life. And it really, it just makes me love Grandma Aggie even more. But for now, friends, this concludes yet another episode of Teacup 41. Let me know in the comment section down below, what is your favorite Debbie Reynolds movie? And if you want to follow me for the rest of my Halloween spooky movie marathon, or you want to be the first to know once November hits and I start making videos about Funkos again, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. It's super easy. All you have to do is click on my face. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. My name is Matt, and I have two degrees, and that's the T cup for one. Go! It's just an evil spell that freezes us.